I can't believe he's joined us. He's the busiest man in the world. He's about to go on tour of the whole world, universe. Tom- is, is it tomorrow you start? Tomorrow we start. The trains are all on strike. I came home yesterday. It took me six hours to get home last night. <clears throat> Just been to get an inhaler because I've got bronchitis and we're starting the tour, but it's going to be great. Do you know what? I'm, do you know what? I'm serious. Uh, I've been moaning like hell. I was at, I was at Wickham uh, against uh, Cambridge last night. And I'm thinking I'm getting the flu. I'm getting the man flu here. I'm getting the man flu. So I, I really have felt rubbish. And I'm thinking, see, what happens if you, you know, really are bad? Uh, well, I've just gone and bought an inhaler that you can open yourself up. I think adrenaline just takes over and you do the get- show must go on, you know. Uh, do you get nervous for, for this, you know, opening night and all this? I know when we, we chatted the other day, you were doing your rehearsals. Uh, do, do you get the butterfly still? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you, you always want to be nervous, probably like a footballer. You, you always want to be nervous and it's always got to matter. It's particularly nervy just because... We've got songs that we've never played before, but I'm sure two gigs in, you know, I, I think when you play new songs, it's kind of, um, you want them to become muscle memory. You don't want to be thinking about it. And, yeah. and I'm sure we'll play them great, but but we'll have to think about it. Do you know what I mean? And But that's kind of cool because sometimes when you play new songs for the first couple of times, there's an energy that's really nice for listeners. And then when you get them a bit better, it's a different energy, but... You know, either way, every gig's a different thing. Every moment's a different moment. Every song's different every night in a different venue with a different audience. It's what I love about gigging. So it just feeds into that, really. Brilliant. Um, See You in the Stars is the new album, which I guess you, you, well, you're touring with. Um, when you get out there, is it different every night? Is is I mean, are you... Uh... I don't know. Did, did you have a sort of routine for different nights, or do you, do you just do you just have to be you? To be honest, every situation is different. You know, you can be a field in Mexico with you know, and it's great, and or you can be in Belgium, or you can be in. We're doing a tour of the UK, so it's probably not. As, but every venue is kind of different in size and shape. The audiences are different. Different songs kind of are more popular in different areas. Sometimes, you know, you've got a mixture of young people and old people. Some people like the older songs. Some people all love seeing the stars because it's been out for a week. It's been a lot of stuff online about it. So you kind of, I think you have to blot all that out and do what you do and make it great. You know what I mean? And then every occasion is a different occasion in a different place. And unbelievably, so it's a real bore trying to rehearse your old songs. Yeah. But it has to be done. But then playing the old songs is an absolute pleasure, you know, because it's they take on a, a whole new life for that four or five minutes, you know. You are an artist. You, you, you're a sensitive soul at times. There's no doubt. You, you, you stick out a new album. Um, the, the single is Sunshine. You're wanting to get people saying, hey, I really like it. What What's the feedback been like so far? <laughs> <Feedback's> <laughs> amazing, actually. Like Sorry, that's, that's proof that I'm <laughs> ill. I just did that. <laughs> I'll be doing it again in yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's um the album's gone down. I was very anxious about it to be honest. I wasn't sure I wanted to make another album just because, you know, physically it kind of takes its toll when you when you're doing all the promo and the touring. And also, you know, emotionally, you, you know, it, it takes a lot to do an album. Not for 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 a lot of people, not for everyone. Um and I was a bit anxious how it'd be received because it's, you know, it's, I stay, they say it's 13, 14 years, but actually it's 20 years because I feel like the last Lightning Seeds album that I really tried on, not tried, but that sounds like terrible, not tried, but was able to get in the right zone for, was Tilt in, in 2000s. And that was our big flop. So I was obviously a bit trepidatious about doing something else. It felt like that ended the sort of 10 year cycle of everything going very well. And, uh, you know, you know it's going to come sometime. Uh, so I, I was a bit trepidatious. And obviously the world's changed and it isn't the same moment. But in many ways, it's a better moment for me because I'm, I'm a little bit more... I think bands these days with social media and with the way things work, you don't really sell that many records, but you're more in control. You're closer to your fans and you get to play more. And in some ways, that's a nicer place to be, really. That's, you, you, you know, you're more in control of your own destiny. 
And I've been amazed, actually, that, uh, you know, I've had very kind words about the new album. Everyone seems to have really, to really like it. And I feel like it's the first time, it's taken me too long, but it's the first time really I've managed to get me and the Lightning Seeds to gel and be one thing. There's always been a sort of a distance. And I think of the guy with the sunglasses on as that bloke. Now it all feels like the same thing. And I think it makes it a little bit more personal and more direct, but it's still very positive and up and sounds like the lightning seeds. So that's what I was hoping for. And it feels like when you finish it, you don't, you still don't know, but then that's what people are saying. So I'm very pleased. Um, is it right? I mean, people are saying, oh, you've not made an album for so long. Is it right? You banged out four other tracks in two weeks. Uh, yeah, my son manages me, Riley, and he was like, you've got to get these done, or we're not going to make the release date. You've got them written. You know how to do this. Stop messing around. So I did. <laughs> and I recorded them old school, because the first couple of albums were all done at home, you know, and I'd played everything. So I kind of just did the same thing, and it was actually much more fun. Um, I was at Gillingham, gosh, I get around the place, don't I? Wick up and down the other week, and they, oh. they bang out the life of Riley. For people who don't know, it, it's your son who plays in the band, Riley. Um, when do you know you've got a hit? When do you when do you know when you well, what point do you go? This is going to be this is this is the one. I think you have to just be able. I mean, for me, I have to do something and be able to stand behind it. And when the world says no, I have to go, no, yes, is the answer. And I believe in this. So Life of Riley was never a hit, never got in the top 20. Didn't really happen, but it was on the radio for years and years. Wherever we play in the world, it's one of the biggest songs in the set. Everyone knows it, but it never got in the charts, you know, and it was never a hit. So it's kind of taught me, and especially these days, even more. You know, charts and all that. It's, they're a load of nonsense. I have no idea who's in the charts, really. I know we are at number 16 this week, which is good. But really? uh, apart from that, I've got no... I haven't looked at the chart. And I don't think anyone does. I think music's changed in the way it's, you know, listened to, bought. You, you know, you have plenty of time to buy it. You don't need to buy it first week. You probably... I mean, me personally, I buy albums I really like or artists I really like. I like an album. But I never listen to it. It stays in the wrapping. And I listen to it on Spotify. So yeah. I just think everyone's got a different way of doing it. And maybe the purchase isn't even the essential part of being a fan, you know. But you've, you've brought me beautifully round, or between the two of us, to football, which is, I guess, we better talk about at some point. Because the life of Riley, the, 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 the backing track, Match of the Day, used for ages, um, you're obviously, we'll, we'll talk about... Three Lions um, and um, Bronchitis. He's got Bronchitis. What a trooper this man is. Um, was it a con is it a conscious? Well, listen, you love football. You're a massive Liverpool fan, aren't you? Simple as that. I love football. I'm a massive Liverpool fan. Um, and, you know, it, it's, a, um, it's a strange thing that we have always... I, I, I mean, when I had my first couple of records out, like around the time of Pure, Little Indie Label... Even at that time in the north on Granada, they always used to use tracks for, you know, I think it was called, I can't remember what the footy show was called, but whatever it was Pick called. Kickoff, I've done it Pick for off. years. Yeah, no, before, I'm talking about the evening Granada one. Kickoff was bigger, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, it was a bit, it used yeah. to show the games midweek. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was Kickoff. It was, I don't think it was, it was I know anyway. That was my, well, we, we're vaguely the same kind of age, aren't we? That was, you, you're taking me back. Yeah, anyway, go on. So what they yeah. used to take, it just, so it, it, yeah, it was it was always, and then Life of Riley somehow for some reason got used a lot, and then I ended up writing Three Lions. You know, so it, uh, there's always been a connection, probably because my two interests, which is really boring. I hate saying it. You know, I wish it was like sculpture and <laughs> I don't know, you know, hiking in the Hebrides or something. You know, but it's not. It's football and music. I love those two things, and they occupy a lot of my time and my thoughts. So. It, it does feel quite natural that the two might be stick together, you know. We'll speak about three lines in a minute. Who's who's your who's your all-time favourite Liverpool player? Difficult, like you know. I think when it's Liverpool, it's a tricky question to answer because as soon as you answer it, there's a, there's ten others that come to mind. I mean, yeah. the player no one ever mentions who I used to love when I was a kid was Emlyn Hughes, you know, and no one even recognises that he played for the club, kind of thing, you know. 
Uh, and everyone talks about Graham Souness, who was pretty good. I love Robbie Fowler. Steven Gerrard's fantastic. Trent's my favourite probably right now, although I've got high hopes for Nunes. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's so many. I had to do my best 11 <clears throat> the other week. And, you know... Come so on, give us it. Give us, give us your... I, I, you know? I can't even remember it, but I had to leave out Ian Rush. It was like, wow. really as far as Ian Rush, you know, or... And I had to leave out... There were so many players. You've got to have John Barnes. You've got to have Kenny Deglige. You've got to have Steve... Yeah. You know, there's so many players and you want to put them all in. I like Torres as well. You know, there's so many yeah. players. So it was tricky, you know. It was tricky. I had to put Kenny Daglish in at left back. Do you know what? Do you know you beat me to it? Because we, I've done this down the years for ages and you speak to all the Liverpool greats. The one person they can't find is a left back, which is they sort of stick Steve... I go back, Alec Lindsay was a great left back, but they have um, uh, Steve Nickel. they sort of shoehorn it until Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson saved everybody. They go, yeah, well, no, Andy Robertson's. But we... having that, my all-time favourite, my 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 hero beyond hero is Joey Jones. You know, remember Joey yeah, Jones? Yeah, Joey Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, um, I mean, there's, you know, it was such a different different time, wasn't it? And uh, you know, there was so many, uh, but fullbacks was always the problem for for about twenty years. There was just, I mean, Risa was okay at, in moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was the left back. He was, you know, had a great shot. Yeah, uh, he, he just, you know, he just. Just consistency, isn't it, and all that, you know, just getting someone who, who you just think. I mean, Andy Robertson, it's funny because even when I watch the modern team now, I always think, oh, Samikas is really good. And then Robertson mm. comes back and you're like, oh, it's just yeah. better, you know. What um, is there a moment, is there a Liverpool moment that you um, that you think, oh, that was that was my fave? I mean, once again, it's, there's so many. Yeah, it's got to be Steven Gerrard in the, in the um, you know, Champions League when we're three down. Just yeah. watching that guy do what he did, single-handedly. All I mean, not single-handedly, but he just everyone was on his shoulders, wasn't he? And he just refused to to lose that game. I thought, you know, ending up at right back, you know, just that was the best performance I've seen. Um, okay, three lions. What guys is it in now going into the World Cup? What have you done with it now? Well, we don't do much with it. We haven't touched it actually since nineteen ninety eight. We only ever did two, two really, and and uh, you know, so obviously we haven't touched it for twenty six or so years. I don't know if that's right, twenty six, but something like that. <clears throat> um, but I think we were talking just because, for all the wrong reasons, that you know it is a Christmas World Cup, and that may prove to be a giant drag, but it might be great. I don't know, you know, but it's it's all a bit weird. But we just thought the idea of a Christmas single and a footy single would be funny, so we kind of talked about it but we didn't know whether we would do it and then there was a lot of stuff online asking us to do stuff um and then when the lionesses won really and they ran into the press conference and sang three lions jumping on the tables and it was so refreshing to watch the lionesses and to see how they were in the interviews and then that sort of topped it off and we just thought we should really do something here but yeah i think it was them doing that that really made us feel like it would be lovely to just you know, maybe, and it, you know, not to replace Three Lions at all, because I think three, the 96th version is the version, but just because it's a one-off Christmas World Cup, to have just quite a funny reflection on that. So yeah. kind of a remix that does that, you know, with, with the word changes. So I think we're going to be doing that. It's still haven't, we haven't finally said, yes, we'll do it, but, you know, we probably will. Um, once again, when you wrote that, did you realise what it, it, it's a monster? Is the wrong word because it, it that, that's that's a, a, a connotation, a wrong connotation. It's, it's been sensational. It's been worldwide. It's it's anthemic, which I guess was the, the the point of it in the first place. But did you know? Did you sit down and think this is this is going to go mental? Not really. No, and it, it's constantly been great. I loved it when it came back in twenty twenty, and a load of people who basically weren't born. Mm. We're seeing, you know, and, and there's loads of people at the gigs who weren't born in '96, so they just related to the 2020 um, World Cup or Euros, whatever, which, whichever it was. And you know, I love the way it recurs. The thing that surprised me most is that people, some in other countries, think it's arrogance because it's the opposite of arrogance. It's really strange to hear them say that, and you're like, if there's anything that's the opposite of arrogance, <laughs> it's this, you know. 
But I so I can't get my head around that. I was talking to someone in Australia and they said, Oh, we regard it as very arrogant over here. I was like, Have you got ears? You know. <laughs> so, and they said, Well, it's coming home. I was like, Yes, the competition was coming to England, you know. Uh, and it's a plea and a wish and a hope and a prayer. And it's a song about being a fan. And I think any fan of any sport can relate to it. And that's the genius of Frank and David did really did the lyrics. And I always think comedians are so clever and so like insightful about people's emotions. And we knew that's what we wanted to do, but I think they just they wrote a lyric that, you know, is about, you know, it's about losing being a football fan. It's about, you know, losing and being together and and sharing the, the the awful moments and the big moments, you know, and that's that's the emotion that's in that song, you know. On top of that, Ian, thanks a lot, mate. All the best for the talk. Lovely talking to you. Sorry it took a while to organise.